Now that I have shown you how the pen tool works to create curves and shapes, and I've also shown you how the layers panel works, let's put all those skills together and create an actual illustrated scene. So in order to do that, I have already set up an Illustrator file for you. So if you have a pre-existing Illustrator file and you want to open it and continue working on it, you go to File and Open. <clears throat> Here on my desktop, I'll go to Illustrator Chapter 3 and 3.3, .3, the Illustrator Sailboat. So as you can see right here, I have already set up all your layers. I'll expand my other panels here so we have access to the colors that we're going to need. And I have numbered everything in the order that you would draw them. So you'll notice right here, the thing that is furthest away from us, the sky, that's at the bottom. Okay. Then as things get closer, they get higher on the layers. So I'm going to start here on the bottom. D for default colors. And what you want to do in an illustration like this is not worry about the edges. Okay. In order to draw the sky, I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to start outside the illustration, like right up here. I'm going to click and drag a rectangle all the way across the sky and down into the water. A big rectangle like that. Now, obviously, I don't want it to be a white rectangle. So on my swatches, down in the lower left corner are swatch libraries. And I'm going to come down to gradients and sky gradients. Right down here at the very end is a sunset gradient, sky 24. But that obviously is not going in the right direction that I wanted it to. So I'm going to close this little panel. And then right up here is my gradient tool. Okay, I can click on that, come right up to the top, hold my shift key and drag a gradient downward. So we get that. Okay, if I wanted it to be a little softer down here, I would hold shift, click and drag a little lower, and there we go. Okay, the other reason why you want layers, obviously, is we can't see what else to trace. So what I would do is simply turn off the eyeball. That frees me up so I can move on to the next layer. I'll go to the sun. And I have the sun set up as light green. That means whatever I draw is going to have light green anchor points. Those are hard to see, especially against light yellow colors. So if you don't like the color that the layer is set up to draw anchor points with, you can go to the right of the name, double click, and change the color of those anchor points. So because I want to see them more, I'll go with medium blue and I'll click OK. Now, since I am on a brand new layer, I'm going to hit D for default colors. I know the sun is not white, so I'm going to click on the white and hit the question mark key. Then I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in for detail work. It definitely helps you out. Okay, and you'll notice the sun is actually made up of two different shapes one big star and a smaller circle within the boundaries of that star. So when you have multiple shapes, you want to start in the proper stacking order by drawing the bigger shape first. Then you get smaller and smaller and smaller as you go. Think of drawing like a pyramid. You draw the base and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you go up. Well, you're stacking a dark yellow circle on top of a lighter yellow circle. So you draw the bigger shape first. Okay, what I need is a star tool for this. And if I come down to the fourth set of tools, well, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth set of tools down on the left, 
I press and hold and these are all my geometric tools. Rectangles, rectangles with round corners, ellipses or circles, I have polygons, and I have a star tool. Okay, by default, stars start from their center. So I'll guess the center of the sun to be about right here. And when I click and drag, I'm gonna get the default star, which is only a five-pointed star. So when I let go, if you don't like it, you have to delete or backspace and get rid of it. Okay, so knowing that we have a five-pointed star as our default, we want to count the number of points that this star has. So I'll start right here at the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 points. So I'll take my star tool again, click and drag, and as I hold the mouse down, I can resize the star, I can rotate the star, or as I'm holding the mouse, I can start hitting the up arrow key and add points to the star. So again, we start with five, I'll hit the up arrow key. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now when I rotate that into place, there's our 19 point star. If I was off a little bit, which I can see I am. You just rotate it, hold your space bar. I did not let go of my mouse yet. Hold your space bar and just reposition that star. And I'll move it and kind of glide it into place right there. Now I let go of the space bar, I let go of my mouse, and I've got my 19 point star. Okay, I'm gonna switch press and hold and go to the ellipse tool. And just to show you how this works, I'm gonna start way out here. I'm gonna hold my shift key for a perfect circle. And when I've got a perfect circle about the size that I want, I'm not gonna let go of my mouse. I'm not going to let go of my shift key. While I'm holding those two down, I hold my space bar at the same time. So I'm right-handed. I'm holding down my mouse with my right hand. On my left hand, I've got my middle finger on the shift key. Now I press my index finger on the space bar and now I move my mouse. Okay, it's not quite big enough. So I kind of line it up on its left side. I kind of line it up near the top, right about there. I let go of only the space bar. I'm still holding shift and I'm still holding my mouse and now I pull my mouse and I resize that circle. I'm still holding shift because I want it to be a perfect circle and once I get it in place, I let go of the mouse first, then I let go of my keyboard. <laughs> now I've drawn the bigger shape first, the smaller shape on top. Then when you go to color, you color them in reverse. I'll click my black arrow first. Then I'll click the eyedropper. So what I do here is if I click, nothing's going to happen because I don't have anything selected. So if I hold command on my Mac or control key on my PC, I will get the black arrow. I hold command on my Mac click on the edge of the circle, let go of the command key, and now click to sample the color on my scan. Remember, it's gonna be darker because this is a template. It's a dimmed scan. I hold the command key on my Mac or control key on my PC, click on the edge of the star, let go of my keyboard to access my eyedropper, and I click again. Light yellow, tucked underneath darker yellow. I'm gonna zoom out. I can either take my magnifying tool and option click or alt click to zoom out. Or if I just stay on another tool, I hit command and minus on my Mac or control and minus on my PC. 
space bar to move that. And now I can turn on my sky and now we have a sun up in the sky. I will turn off the sky. I will turn off the sun. And what I would highly recommend as you go through the process of building up an illustration, every time you finish a layer, save your progress. I've already done two layers and I haven't saved anything yet. So I'm gonna stop for a minute, go to file, save as, last name, first name, sailboat scene. I'll save that to my desktop as an Illustrator file. I click Save. I click OK. And now, unlike Photoshop, again, we're in a different program. I don't have to close this and then reopen the one on my desktop. This is the Nielsen Chris sailboat scene. So I can just continue where I left off. See, there's the layers I've already created. Now I'm on the sailboat and I the name of the layer is getting cut off so I can pull that to the right. The sailboat black pole, number three, this little mast right here. Okay, I'm on a brand new layer, D for default colors. This is a black mast, not a white one. So I click on the white, hit the question mark key and I'm gonna zoom in closer right about there where I can see the whole length of that pole. Okay, at the top of the pole, there is this perfect circle. So I'm gonna go back to my ellipse tool. And now again, I can start wherever I want, hold shift key, and when I get about the right size, I'm gonna hold shift in my mouse and the space bar, and now I move the mouse right there. Wow, that was dead on. I'm really good. Okay, I'm proud of myself. If it's not the right size, just let go of the space bar. Continue to move your mouse while you're holding your shift key. And you'll get a nice circle right there. Let go of the mouse first when you're done. Then you let go of the shift key. And then I press and hold and come back to the rectangle. Okay, the key word here for the rest of your life in Illustrator is overlap. You must overlap your shapes. So you could see this post right here, this mast. It doesn't end right on the circle. I would start it inside the circle right here. Now I click and drag. I come all the way down past the edge of the boat. I overlap the edge of the red right there. You can see that. The mast goes down over the edge of the red. It goes over the edge of the circle. You must overlap the edges of your objects. Right now it looks like a mess, but color is where it's going to get all cleaned up. So I'm going to select everything now that it's done. I click on my fill and I'll click on black. I don't need the stroke anymore. The whole thing is black. So I click on the black stroke and I hit the question mark key. No outline. You don't need a black outline if the whole shape is black. So there's another part done. I'll turn off the eyeball, command S on my Mac or control S to save your progress on a PC. And now I'll jump up to layer four, the two white sails. Okay, again, I'm on a brand new layer, D for default colors. And even though these sails are going to be white, don't start with white. Click on the white fill, hit the question mark key. You draw as outlines and you fill when things are done. So this sail right here, I can come into my pen tool. I'm gonna to start right up here at this corner. Click and let go. Now I'll come down and hold shift key. Shift click for a vertical edge. Shift click for a horizontal edge. And now I let go of the keyboard 
and I come back and click right there at the top, making this long triangular shape. I can hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and click outside. I deselect the sail. Now when I let go of the keyboard, I've got my pen tool again and I'm ready to draw one more time. I'll start right here. Click and let go. Come all the way down. Shift click. Come all the way across. Shift click. And now I have to draw this long curve. Okay, the best types of long curves are made up of three points. One at the beginning, one in the middle of the curve, and one at the end of the curve. So I'm gonna start right here from a corner. On a Mac, you hold your Option key. On a PC, you hold your Alt key. I'm gonna click and drag up because I want my curve to go up. About 30% of the length from here to here. Right about here is the halfway point on my curve. I'll click and drag up. I let go of my mouse. I come all the way up to the top. And if I'm ending a curve at a corner, I hold my Option or Alt key. This curve is still going up and to the right. So I'm going to hold Option on my Mac and continue up and to the right until I've bent that curve right along the edge of the sail. Now I take my black arrow, select across the two sails, and to reset the white fill, I hit the letter D for default colors. I do not need the black outline here at the end, so I click on it and hit the question mark key. So now I have two nice flat white sails. I can option or alt click with my magnifying tool a couple of times, space bar to move it over, and here's what I've drawn so far. Okay. Command S on my Mac or Control S to save my progress on a PC. And now I'll turn off those four layers and continue on to number five, the red boat. I'm going to zoom back in for details. If I'm on a brand new layer again, D for default colors. I know I'm not drawing a white sailboat, so I'll click on the white, hit the question mark key, and now I go to my pen tool. Okay, again, the key word here is to overlap. You know that the, sa uh, the waves are covering up the bottom of the sailboat, but take the sailboat out of the water, it's still gonna have a bottom or it would sink. So you have to draw this as if the bottom is still there. Okay, this sailboat does not start here. It starts down in the water. Click, come up, click. I'll come all the way across, hold my shift key and click for a horizontal edge. Option or alt key to start from a corner. The curve goes down. I let go of my mouse and the option key. This curve comes down into the water, down and to the left, and back to the start. You're not going to see all this when, later when we draw the wave. So now I select it with my black arrow, go to my eyedropper, and sample the red. Okay, a sailboat will have a bottom edge. I'll close the eyeball, Command S on my Mac, Control S on a PC, and I'm just gonna keep forging ahead. Now this one is the light blue wave, number six. So I'm gonna take my magnifying tool, Option or Alt click a couple of times so I can zoom out. And this light blue wave goes all the way across the scene. So I have to zoom out to see everything. D for default colors. I'm not drawing white water. So I click on the white, hit the question mark key. Remember from before with the sky, I didn't start the sky right on the edge of the illustration. I went way past the edge. So I'm gonna do the same thing up here for number six, the light blue wave. 
I'm going to go to my pen tool and notice I was on the black arrow. So what I would always suggest is go to your white arrow before you use the pen tool, then jump down to the pen tool. This wave does not end right on the edge of the illustration. It should end outside the illustration. So I'm going to click and drag down to the right, let go, and move to the end where it's going up to the right. Click and drag up to the right. Option or Alt key for a corner goes down to the right. Let go of the Option key or Alt key, and it goes up to the right. Option or Alt key to go down to the right. Let go of the keyboard to go back up to the right. And again, using the concept of overlap. This wave does not come down and go around the whale. It goes right behind the whale. So I'm going to draw the wave right through this whale. There's a little tip of the wave right here. Option or Alt key to start from a corner. Let go and the end of that wave comes up right there. You cut right through the whale. Option or Alt key to start from a corner, let go, and you cut right through the whale's tail. Option or Alt key to start from a corner, and you end outside the edge of the illustration. So you can see right there, I started outside, went up, and down and up and down and ended outside but still I'm not done yet okay if I were to take the black arrow and select and color this with my eyedropper right here that's what my wave would look like which obviously doesn't work illustrator always fills an object from the first point straight across to the last point. Okay, it's actually filling above the water for the most part. So obviously, like I said, that's not gonna work. Edit, undo the eyedropper. If you are drawing a shape that you wanna fill with color, you have to go all the way around back to the start. So I'm gonna go to my pen tool. I'm gonna click right where I left off click to connect then i'm going to come down and click come all the way across and click and then come back up to the beginning one big loop now when i select an entire shape with my black arrow i take my eyedropper and there's my blue water great Here's what I've drawn so far. The rectangle goes way down into the water. You don't see that because the water is covering it up. The sun just sits there by itself. So we'll turn that off. Notice the black mast goes way down into the boat. You don't see the bottom because the red boat covers that. You overlap. The two white sails just sit there by themselves. We drew the bottom of the red boat. See, it goes way down here, but you don't see that because it tucks underneath the wave. You overlap your shapes. So we've been doing a lot of successful overlapping. Okay, I'll turn off light blue wave. And then I have a gray whale that sits in front of that, which means on top of that layer. Another file and save. I'm on a brand new layer again. D for default colors. This is not Moby Dick. This is not the great white whale. So I'm going to click on the white. Hit my question mark key. And I'm going to zoom in again. Okay, what you want to keep in mind about here is that this whale is made up of multiple pieces one large gray body and then a black oval, a white circle, and a bunch of gray spots and a smile line. You always start with the biggest shape first, the body. So I'm going to go to my pen tool. This whale goes behind this wave. So I'm going to start inside the wave. 
the whale goes up to the left. Then I let go and come right where that point meets right there. Go straight up like that. Then I'll come all the way across the top. Come across to the right. Then I'll come down the back right here, right next to this little spot. Come down. Then I'll come to the bottom of the curve. Come to the right. And I'll click. Now I hold Option or Alt key. Drag a line up, let go of the Option or Alt key, and drag a line up to the right to bend that curve. Option or Alt key for a corner, the curve goes down. No Option or Alt key at the end, and the curve goes back up to the right. Option or Alt key, and the curve goes down. No Option or Alt key, and the curve goes to the left. Option or Alt key for a corner, the curve goes down. No Option or Alt key to continue my curve, it goes into the water, across underneath the water, like drawing the belly of the whale, and back to the start, right there. One big shape first. I'll click outside with my black arrow. Notice how we have a black circle underneath a white circle. So you always draw the bigger one first. I'll press and hold and go to the ellipse. I'll click and drag up here. And when I have an ellipse about the size that I want, I hold my space bar and now move my mouse. Right there. Let go of just the space bar. And when I move my mouse, I can shrink that down right there. Shift key for a circle, space bar when I get it the right size, and move the circle right about there. Now I'm going to hold only my Option or Alt key. When you are on the ellipse and you hold only the Option or only the Alt key, that means draw from the center. So right here, I'm going to hold Option on my Mac and draw from the center. Here, I have not only the ability to draw from the center, but I also want it to be a circle. So now I'm going to hold Option or Alt key and my Shift key. And now I can draw a perfect circle from the center. Okay, if it's off just a tiny bit, Nobody's going to know, so don't worry about that. Shift and Option or Alt, and I draw. Always let go of the mouse first. Shift and Option or the Alt key. Drag and let go of the mouse first. Shift and your Option or Alt key. Drag and let go of the mouse first. Now I switch over to the Pen tool. I'm going to draw this simple curve. One that goes down, come across, one line that goes up. Now I go to my black arrow. Now that I've drawn all the shapes, I'm ready to color them. You start with the smaller pieces first. Here's why. You don't want to take the body of the whale and take your eyedropper and fill because now you don't know what color the spots are or the eyeball is. So the biggest shape gets drawn first, but it gets colored last. I'll go to edit, undo. Okay, I'm on my eyedropper. Hold my command key or my control key on my PC, and I'm going to click on that little white highlight. Let go of the command key or let go of my keyboard. There's my eyedropper. Sample the white. Hold Command or Control key on your PC. Click the eyeball. Let go of the keyboard. There's your uh, eyedropper. And you sample the black eye. Now I'm going to hold Command or Control on my PC. Click. Now I'm going to hold Command and my Shift key. Command for the black arrow. 
shift key to add more than one selection. So I shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. Let go of the keyboard entirely and sample the spots. Hold command key or control key on my PC, click on the edge of the whale, let go of my keyboard and sample the whale. Now I can take my magnifying tool, option or alt click on a PC, option click on a Mac to zoom out. And here's what I've drawn. I just drag through the eyeballs. Cool. That blue wave is still there. It just went behind the whale, behind the whale's tail. Overlap your shapes. Okay. So I'll just zip through these, turn these eyeballs off again. Now I come up to number eight, this middle blue wave. I'm on a brand new layer again. D for default colors. It's not drawing white water. Click on the white, hit the question mark key. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, just to see a little more detail as I draw. I always go to the white arrow first then the pen tool. I do not start on the edge, I start outside. Click and drag down, then click and drag up. Option or Alt key to start from a corner, no keyboard at the end of your curve. Option or Alt key to start from a corner, no keyboard at the end of your curve. If I didn't get that part right, I can always hold my Command key and bend that wave down or bring it up or whatever I want to do. My command key activates my white arrow, which is my editing tool. When I let go of the keyboard, I have my pen tool. Option or alt key to start from a corner. No keyboard at the end of a curve. Space bar to move this over. Option or Alt key to start from a corner, the curve comes down. No Option or Alt key at the end when the curve goes up. Option or Alt key to start from a corner, the curve comes down. No keyboard at the end and the wave does not end on the illustration. It ends outside. So I'll click and drag up like that. Remember, you want to draw a shape that fills with color, so you have to make your way back to the start. On my keyboard, I'm going to hit Command and Minus. That would be Control and Minus on a PC to zoom out. Space bar for my hand tool, and I pull this over. Now when I let go of the keyboard, my pen tool pops right back up because I'm using keyboard shortcuts. I click right on the end of this line, this anchor point, to reconnect. Click, come down, click, come all the way across, click, and back to the start. Click. Now I select it with my black arrow. I go to my eyedropper and I sample that medium blue. Zip through all the eyeballs. Now the whale's belly overlaps. It goes underneath the blue wave. There it is. So you always overlap your shapes. You will hear me say it a thousand times, and if I have to say it 2,000 times, I will. Overlap your shapes. I'll zip through these eyeballs. All those layers are done. Command S on my Mac to save my progress. That would be Control S on your PC. We only got two layers left, so let's go to the bottom dark blue wave right here. D for default colors since I'm starting on a brand new layer. As always, that's not white water. So I'll click on the white. Hit the question mark key, and I'll zoom in one more time just to see a little more detail. Click on my white arrow first, then my pen tool. The wave does not start on the edge. It starts outside the edge. This wave comes down to the right, 
then it comes back up to the right. Option or Alt key to start from a corner goes down to the right. No keyboard at the end when it goes back up to the right. If I'm running out of room, space bar for your hand tool. Now I go right back to the corner where I left off. Option or Alt key to start from a corner goes down to the right. No keyboard at the end. And it doesn't end on the edge of the illustration. It ends outside. It goes up and up and up for that long curve. Now I just keep on going. Click. 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 I'll hold my space bar and just move this over. Let go of the space bar. Click where I left off. Click to continue. And click to make my shape. My black arrow can select the whole thing. My eyedropper can sample color off of my scan. And if I want to see the entire page, it's Command-0 or Control-0 on a PC. If I want to zoom out a little bit more, Command and minus on my Mac, that would be Control and minus on your PC. Spacebar so you can move it back into view. So now I turn on everything Got my scene pretty much made up, but I want to add a few more details. Okay, I forgot to add a layer for details. So on layer nine, I'm going to come down and hit the little plus, add or create a brand new layer. I don't like that anchor point color, so I'm going to go to the right of the name of the layer, double click, and let's make these anchor points maybe cyan because we're going to add something to this dark sky. I'm going to call this uh, Sky Details. Okay, so before I do anything else, save my progress one more time. And now what I'm going to do is you'll notice next to your swatches is brushes and next to that is symbols. Symbols are pieces of art that you want to use over and over and over again. So in the bottom left corner is a library. Just like swatches has a library, brushes has a library for more brushes, and symbols has a library for more symbols. I'm going to click that and come all the way down to nature. If I pull this corner down, these are all typical things you would see in an outdoor scene, like these three, which are clouds. If I click on cloud number one, it gets added to my symbols panel. I click on cloud number two, and I click on cloud number three. And since I'm doing a drawing out at C, I might as well add a fish right here, fish number three, and fish number four. And let's take this little shark down here. Why not? Okay. The reason why they get added to your symbols panel is now I don't need this nature panel open anymore. I can close it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is simply take cloud number one, click and drag it out onto the page right there. I'll move this out of the way so you can see it. I'll click on cloud number two. Click and drag it out right here. And then I'll click once on cloud number three. Click and drag it right there. Now, I don't like how small these clouds are. So especially this one. I'm going to click on it with my black arrow. Switch to my free transform tool. And then you get this widget that pops up. Okay, if you do not look at this widget, you could accidentally rotate or you could accidentally distort 
your cloud like that and squish it into nothing. Okay, so I obviously don't want to do that. So I'm going to go to edit, undo. Edit, undo that accidental rotation if you did that. Okay, as soon as I click on an object and I go to free transform, I want to click the top button. It's called constrain. What that means is don't distort the object. I can make it bigger, but it's going to be in proportion. So I'll drag that corner down like that. Okay. I'll hold my command key for my black arrow or control key on a PC and I'll click this cloud. I let go of the keyboard, pops right back to the free transform. I'm on constraint. And I'll click and drag this corner up. Make it pretty big like that. And I like that cloud how it is. So once you want to move it, go back to your black arrow. Then you can move it. Maybe we'll put it right there. Kind of overlapping. But I don't want to cover up my artwork. Okay. I am going to cover it because the clouds, the sky details are way up here. Whatever's on top is in front. So I'm going to take the sky details, drag them down just above the sky. Remember, when you're moving layers, you want to look for that thin blue line. See? Now it tucks behind the sailboat. I'll take this cloud, maybe get maybe make it coming off the edge of the illustration like that. I'll click outside. That looks good. Save your progress. And then I want to add a couple of those fish. Obviously, the fish need to be in the wave. So if I click on this bottom wave, I'm going to start on the layer below it, create another brand new layer. I double click and let's call that shark. Okay, click outside with your black arrow, deselect the wave because now you're on a layer under the wave. I click once on the shark. Now I click and drag it out over here. If I want the body or the back to look like that, I could do it. But if I want that shark kind of peeking up out of the water, I click once on free transform. If I go outside the box, I get a bent arrow so I could rotate that up a little bit. Go back to my black arrow. Just kind of tuck him down a little bit right there. Cool. I like that. Let's do another fish that pops out from behind this wave. So I click on this wave. I start on the layer under that wave. And I create another brand new layer. Double click. We'll call that one purple fish. Hit enter or return to accept the name. Click once outside, deselect the wave. Now I take the purple fish, click once on it, wait a second, drag it out right there. Again, I can go to my free transform, go outside the box and rotate it a little bit right there. I'll click outside with my black arrow and save my progress one more time. Then I'm going to click on this last wave, this one that's furthest away. That's why it's lower. I start on the layer under that, create one more brand new layer. I'm going to double click that name and call that green fish. Always hit enter on a PC or return on a Mac to accept the name. Click once outside to deselect. I click once on the green fish. Then I click and drag. And let's put him right out here. I'm going to go to my free transform. Rotate that guy a little bit. And now I go to my move tool. Let's have him jumping out of the water right there. Why not? Fish jump out of the water. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to add 
one more element to this illustration. Why is there an abandoned boat out in the middle of the ocean? Let's make it a little more playful scene. So I'm going to click once on the red boat. And again, I want to put people in the boat. They need to go behind the red. Behind means below. So when I click on the boat, it finds that layer. You start on the layer below it and you create another brand new layer. So that layer will be below the red boat. Double click the name and we will call that people. Hit enter on a PC or return on a Mac. I'll click once outside. And now I can go to my symbols panel one more time. Come down to the lower left, the library of symbols. And I will go down to, I believe it is Tiki. Yes. When I pull this corner down, I have the lady right here, female figure. I click. She gets added to my symbols. There's the male figure. Click. He gets added to my symbols. And they have this big freaky cat right here. Click. It gets added to my symbols. Now I can close up this extra panel. I click once on the man. Now I click and drag him over here. He's automatically going to go in. Because the layer is underneath the red, it's underneath the waves. So you can see his feet, but we're not going to see them when we let go because you overlapped your shapes. That's perfect. I'm going to click once on the female. Now click and drag. I'll put her right there. Having their little party out on the boat. Click outside. Click once on the cat. Click and drag it. That's just a massive cat, <laughs> okay? And we'll put that cat right there. This is a big old freaky cat. I click once outside. Now we've got a nice fantastical scene going on here. A little bit more action going on. And this guy, they're kind of crowding the cat, so maybe I'll move this guy over a little bit, just as long as I don't see his leg down here. We'll move her over a little bit more. Let me move that cat in a little bit more. There we go. All right. File, save your progress. Now, you'll also notice across the bottom and around the sides, I have a mess. That cloud goes right outside the edge. All the waves are making this big mess across the sides and the bottom. I need to clean up the illustration finally. Okay, I'll just move that shark because I saw the tip of his tail sticking out here. I want to clean up this entire scene. So now what I can do is strip off all my layers. I'll just click and drag through everything except the very top layer, the final clipping mask. If you accidentally hit that eyeball, just turn it on again. All you have to do here is hit D for default colors. Go to your rectangle tool right there. And now you draw the frame, the boundary of the illustration. So right up here in the upper left, I'll drag all the way across to the lower right. Right there. That's the size that my illustration should be. I'm going to turn on all my layers by zipping through those eyeballs. And you could see how much more space I drew past the edge of the illustration. This is great, actually. Once I know I'm not going to be drawing anything else, I don't need my scan. I click on it, drag it to the little trash can. And now all I have to do is start up above the page, click and drag over everything. If you don't want to click and drag, you can click outside and just hit Command A for all on a Mac. That'll be Control A for a PC. A for all. So now what I'm basically asking Illustrator to do is only let me see what lies directly below this white rectangle, this clipping mask. 
Your mask or container has to be drawn on your top layer so it can trap everything below it, okay? Everything outside the edges of this white rectangle, you're not gonna see in a minute. So now I just go to Object Menu, all the way down to make a clipping mask, Make. Everything gets trapped and cleaned up right there, okay? That's what clipping masks are for to kind of collect everything and clean it all up. But there is a drawback to those. Number one, notice your layers, okay? None of these layers have the little triangle anymore. All of these layers are now blank. When you make a clipping mask, which we did, everything gets sucked up to the top layer, okay? So I only tell people, only use a clipping mask when you absolutely know you are done with your drawing. Because I can't come over to this fish and try to move the fish. It'll just move the whole illustration. It's like one big flat photograph. Okay, so I have to undo that. If I decided, wait, I want to move a bunch of stuff around, I shouldn't have done a clipping mask. Okay, let me undo that. Edit, undo the clipping mask. Now when I click outside, if I select again, notice every layer has a little colored anchor on the right. This little colored dot, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Those are called selection indicators. This little orange anchor is telling me I have selected the green fish on that layer. This little colored blue anchor is telling me I've selected all three characters on this layer. This little colored anchor is telling me I've selected all the parts of the gray whale. Okay. This means there's artwork on every one of these layers. So if I decided I wanted to move the fish, just turn off the eyeball on the top one and move it up or move the cat down. You have the ability to experiment when you don't do a clipping mask. Okay, I'll move that shark up a little higher so you can see the mouth. Now that I completely know I'm done, I really don't intend to make any more changes to this illustration. I save it one last time. I turn on all my layers, command A for select all or control A on a PC for all, and I do it again. Object, clipping mask, make. Everything gets sucked up to the top layer as a group. Everything from here all the way down is now empty. Notice how the top layer has a triangle. That means artwork is on this layer. See, it made a clipping group. And that clipping group is made up of all these things. Every one of these little pieces. Okay? I recommend you keep these triangles closed. It just makes things more difficult, more confusing. If a layer has a triangle, it has artwork on it. If a layer doesn't have a triangle anymore, it's now an empty layer. You can leave these because they're not going to do anything anyway. Or if you really like cleaning things up, you can click on the top layer with no triangle. Shift click the bottom most layer with no triangle. And throw all of them in the trash. Because we made one final clipping mask. Our illustration is done. Command S on a Mac. Control S on a PC. And there's your final illustrated scene. Great job. In a minute, I'm going to challenge you with one more final scene that I'm not going to give you so much help on. So you can really prove to me you got the hang of this. And I'll show you that in a few minutes.